Tonight, kittens abandoned in a sack, the SPCA speaks out. Invercargill bemoans the loss of its traffic department. <clears throat> and the other side of the all black coach. Good evening. We start tonight with one of those stories that can make you wonder about human nature. The dumping of pet animals is something that always gets a lot of publicity around Christmas. But as Sally Pears reports, the problem is far from being just seasonal. Life for these three kittens so far hasn't been a bed of roses. They were found this afternoon by a farmer. Somebody had put them in a superphosphate bag, bound it with wire and chucked them from the side of a road down a gully. If they hadn't been found, these kittens would have slowly starved to death or, if the weather had worsened, frozen to death. The SPCA find it hard to believe anyone could be so cruel. What is even harder to believe is it's the second time this week in Dunedin. On Saturday, SPCA manager Mac McGilvray was given seven kittens who were found by the highway in Green Island. They'd also been tied up in a bag and tossed from the road. But they weren't so lucky. All seven were in bad shape and Mac had to destroy them. Even after years in the job, he can't fathom how anyone could be so cruel and ignorant. I would like to think that we've seen the last of people like that, but we obviously haven't. Uh, recently I was called down to Foxhill Yacht Club and there was ten full-grown chickens in a sack with two and a half bricks. Now, the disturbing thing about that, there was an awful lot of eggs in that sack too, which is, indicates that they were probably alive for some time before they drowned. And um, there's no need for it. The SPCA or a local vet can give advice on how to cope with animals. If they can't find homes for them, they can at least destroy them in a humane way. Max says all this could be avoided if pet owners would have their animals spayed when they first get them. A large Southland goat farming company has gone into receivership. Southern Goat Corporation, which has about 200 shareholders, mainly around Southland, runs Cash Gora Goats at Athol. Receiver Merv Cook, who was appointed by the Bank of New Zealand, says the company's been in difficulties since losing more than 2,000 newly shorn goats through bad weather two years ago. It's looking increasingly likely that Invercargill will lose its traffic department to the Ministry of Transport. The Ministry wants a uniform system of traffic control throughout the country, and Invercargill's among the last on the takeover list. It means a huge loss of revenue for the city, and also it puts its low accident record at risk. In 1987, Invercargill recorded extremely low accident and casualty figures, a trend that's been developing over the past decade. Lee Davies has been to the southern city to find out what made its traffic department so effective. When you hit the Invercargill city limits, you'd better not be breaking the traffic laws, because this is probably the toughest town in New Zealand when it comes to traffic control. And although the locals aren't crazy about the fact that they can't get away with anything, they still have good things to say about the city's traffic department. I like them transport down here. I've got some hard case jackets. I suppose you get to know this the people here and uh, it's more on a personal level. Uh, well, it's certainly a bit of a, uh, an effect on the rates of the uh, late fares of the city, of course, I think, uh, which is a bit of a shame. It's going to hit everybody's pocket. Yeah, just out to get you. And that's the truth. The city didn't earn its reputation by being easy on people. It's usually attributed to the work of Chief Traffic Officer Graham Cockroft, who's been with the department since 1954. He points out with some pride that in the past 10 years there's been a 75% reduction in accidents involving injury. We've achieved it by rigid enforcement of, of drinking and driving. <clears throat> I've no time for people that drink and drive. He's known throughout the country for his department's drink-drive blitzes and for a number of other campaigns Invercargill's undertaken over the years. They haven't all involved catching traffic offenders. 18 months ago, the city opened the Graham Cockcroft Cycle Park, where youngsters are taught how to cycle safely. Now it seems it may all be coming to an end. The Ministry of Transport's determined to knuckle in on Invercargill, and there are real fears that'll mean the end of the low accident rate. Retired Traffic Committee Chairman and former member of the New Zealand Traffic Council, Mervyn Nederer, is sure it'll destroy Invercargill's record, and he's determined to fight it. Well, I'm going to take up all the cudgels I can muster to see that the minister, uh, if he survives another term of parliament, uh, comes down here. If not, well, it'll be good riddance to their policy, I think. 
He's not alone in his opinion. The whole thing is, is a hideous uh, exercise by the government. A major concern is that resources and staff levels will be reduced as soon as the Ministry's takeover is complete. And it's felt that's an area the MOT should be forced to look into. first thing they want to do is admit they've made a failure, that their department is a complete failure. And they haven't got the wherewithal to do the job. Uh, uh, the, I don't blame the traffic inspectors themselves, but they haven't got the, the number to patrol the roads. You read every weekend, Monday's paper, 14, 16, 18 killed. It's not happening in Invercargill. Invercargill's worst fear is that's what will change. It's now almost certain the South's only remaining vehicle testing station will continue to issue warrants of fitness. The service at the Andersons Bay Road station in Dunedin seemed in doubt after the Ministry of Transport decided to quit warrant testing from the end of next month. But there's been interest from the private sector from as far afield as Christchurch in operating the two warrant of fitness lanes. Applications are still being sought before a final decision is made. The other two lanes will specialise in the certification of heavy and special duty vehicles and will continue to be operated by the Ministry of Transport. All Black coach Grizz Wiley is a man with a tough public image. To most people, he's a gruff character who rules his players with an iron fist. But as Ken Nicholson found out in Invercargill this week, there's another side to the man with the world's top rugby coaching job. Wiley was joined by current All Black Gary Wetton and former All Black Duncan Robertson in a promotional week run by the Old Boys Club for the benefit of rugby in the South. The image certainly came from his playing days. Whether it was for the All Blacks. Now this is the sort of position from which Alec Wiley scored a try against Scotland by breaking there. He's gone. Wiley, number six, taking this shot. But well tackled there by Ripley. Gives it to Brian Williams. This is Kirkpatrick. Or his club side, Glenmark. In those days, Grizz Wiley wasn't the man to tangle with, as many opponents found out. Today, he's coach of the world's best team, the All Blacks, and that public image hasn't changed. But people who are close to Wiley know there's another very different side to the man's character. A friendly, more personal attitude, which became apparent this week in Invercargill. In a packed three days, Wiley, Duncan Robertson and Gary Whitten spoke at 18 schools, evening functions and held training clinics for all ages. He faced a barrage of questions from boys who were learning that there was a lot behind the gruff exterior of Grizz Wiley. Not all the questions were straightforward. Yes. Uh, would you like to see a test match between South Africa and New Zealand? Others forced Wiley to use something he never used know. in his playing yeah, days, a sidestep. What do you do when the guys get some scratch? <laughs> uh, what do you do when your team does that? But while he would surprise many people with his public front these days, it's still out in the paddock where Grizz feels most at home. All black lock Gary Wetton is one man who appreciates Wiley not only as a coach, but as a man. Uh, he's a very thoughtful man, a very thinking man. Sure, at times he does crack the whip, and that's what's needed with anyone, I feel. Uh, if you look at him here today uh, with all these kids here, uh, he communicates with them very well. And uh, He's getting around, he's down in Invercargill now, he's been up north, he goes to Otago, he goes everywhere to do it, and... Uh, it has to be good for the game. I'm not sure if he'd like us sitting here talking about this, but there really is a, a warm, friendly part of Grizz Wiley there that doesn't always come across. Well, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't want to think that. Uh, I wouldn't want him to think that I think he's soft because I'm sure he'll take it out on me at some stage. But thankfully, the days of grim, boring training sessions are gone, and these days the emphasis is on fun and ball skills. Wiley sees his job as All Black coach as far wider than merely preparing the national team. He's constantly travelling the country promoting the new image of rugby as a skill game. And it's obvious he loves it. It's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, sometimes it can be a bit frustrating when you're trying to get them to do something and they, they can't really pick it up. But in the end, as I say, the, the results are there. I mean, it, uh, every time we've gone somewhere, the improvement has been greatly noticed and uh, that's all you can ask for. There was a cardboard mask that came out during your Cantab days, of course, with the shield that sort of uh, gave the face of Grizz Wiley being a grim sort of doer, sort of character, rod in hand, when in fact you, you do work differently with rugby teams than that. When we had the shield it was hard work and sometimes it was a bit grim, but uh, that's all gone by the way now. And... 
Alex Wiley minus the bark. The temperatures now on a day when only one centre made it into the 20s. It was sunny at Half Moon Bay and 17 degrees. Invercargill was cloudy with 15. The predicted high for tomorrow is 18 degrees. Gore overcast and 15. Belclutha sunny and 17. Dunedin cloudy 14. The high tomorrow is for 17 degrees. Palmerston sunny today and 17. Omru had 17 degrees. We hope for good weather for you with your festival weekend coming up. Ranfurly 13 degrees. Lumsden 16. Queenstown it was cloudy and 14 degrees. Partly cloudy in Wanaka, but still a good temperature, 18 degrees. And the high has been recorded in Alexandra. It was fine and 20. Finally in Teyana, sunny and 19 degrees. We'll be back tomorrow night. Good night.